Welcome to this presentation on river, coast, and sea uh, management. My name is Gerald Czarnewski. I'm head of the Coastal and Marine Management Group at the Leibniz Institute for Baltic Sea Research and at the same time professor at Klaipeda University. A brief overview. So I will give you a background, then talk about the conceptual framework, the integrated coastal area and river basin management, how the Water Framework Directive is related to this and carries this concept further. And I will finish with an example with eutrophication in one of the largest river basins of the Baltic Sea, the Oder River Basin. And I will finish with uh, conclusions. Rivers form the coastal zones in many ways. Here, the Yukon Delta, where sediments create a delta. The Amazonas is a different uh, example. Here we see how the coastal zone is modified and kept dynamic due to the river and its sediments. But at the same time, river mouths were always hotspots of uh, human activities. This is an example from the Netherlands. You see Rotterdam, the large ports, and all the locks um, protecting Rhine, Maas, and Scheldemouth from uh, flooding. But the rivers can be a problem for coastal zones as well. Here, the Tiber River near Rome, discharging sediments, nutrients, and pollutants into the coastal Mediterranean Sea. So you see that there is a close relationship between river basins, rivers, and the coastal zone. As a consequence, in 1999, the UNEP came up with a conceptual framework called Integrated Coastal Area and River Basin Management, ICAM. This falls with uh, the goals falls within the scope of sustainable development, and it is more or less meant to promote sustainable development. Idea is to focus on the efficient use of space and resources in these linked systems, and it will apply modern management techniques. This includes involvement of stakeholders and many aspects that are known from integrated coastal zone management. Idea of this concept is to overcome the traditional separate approaches and to link really not only the river to its, its basin and the coast to its coastal zone, but both elements together. To give an idea of the benefits of this approach, 20 worldwide case studies were documented and reported. And there were several lessons learned from it. One important aspect is that one has to take attention to socio-economically equitable uh, development of both systems, coast and river. The problem is that very often a small coastal zone is facing a large uh, river basin. And this means that when it comes to discussions, to negotiations, the river basin dominates the coastal zone and the coastal zone does not have a say. Another aspect is strengthening of enabling conditions of an enabling environment. So this means the political will has to be there. The legislation has to be uh, in place if you want to be successful with this kind of initiative. Very often you have to improve the institutions working in this area. They have to be able to coordinate it. Cooperation has to exist between coast and river basin. And the institutions have to have 
the capacity to do so. And last not least, you have to involve stakeholders, those who are affected, the decision makers, from coast and from river basin, and they have to meet. So the lessons learned were that factors for a successful implementation was a strong institutional leadership, so one who runs the entire process, a strategic partnership and full stakeholder involvement. Very often it helps if this approach is linked to spatial planning approaches. You need binding agreements between river basin and coast and an effective communication and the sharing of relevant information. Effective communication is an important aspect because very often river basins are transboundary and this means different languages are spoken and possibly there is no joint language and this hampers really these kind of developments. The Oder case study, the Oder River Basin and its coastal zone were one of the 20 worldwide case studies and in the beginning the most important issues were defined. And of course, this was flooding from storm surges, river floods, because in 2011, large areas of the river basin, the Oda River basin, were inundated and the coastal zone was very much affected as well. The Oda is a chipping channel. This has to be maintained. You have to, a lot of engineering measures. They have to be coordinated and maintained. But at the same time, this maintenance creates problems, for example, for fish migration. On the other hand, these ships introduce alien species, non-native species, and likely alter fauna and flora. But most important in this river basin was eutrophication and the poor water quality. This is mainly caused by nitrogen and phosphorus nutrient loads from intensive agriculture, from cities and industries. And the heavy eutrophication of the coastal zone, of the lagoon, hampers the economic development of uh, the area. The order is an, uh, positive, a positive, best case uh, example because we have many of the desired aspects. We have the International Commission on the Protection of the Order Against Pollution, a joint commission. Poland, Germany, and Czech Republic. And the objectives are already close to the problems. To prevent the pollution, to achieve most natural aquatic and littoral ecosystems. On the other hand, to permit the utilization of the Oder River. To provide precautions against the risk of flood damage. And last not least, because most important, to coordinate the implementation of the EU Water Framework Directive. So the EU is a major driver for these integrated approaches. And the EU Water Framework Directive is a core in it. It shall ensure a good status of all ground and surface waters, lakes, rivers, uh, transitional waters and coastal waters in the entire EU. And the criteria for a good status are the biological quality, fish, benthic species, aquatic flora, hydromorphological uh, quality, like the river banks, physical chemical quality, such as the nutrients, but also temperature and oxygen availability and chemical quality. Chemical quality means uh, the pollutants, heavy metals, 
organic uh, chemicals. But the focus of the Water Framework Directive is very much on eutrophication. And because the Water Framework Directive is integrated into the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, one can say that this even expands the concept towards the sea and is even more comprehensive. Let's focus on eutrophication, on the problem in this uh, river basin. These pictures show the river basins in the entire Baltic Sea region and the sea itself. Agricultural land is shown on the uh, left-hand side. Red areas indicate high agricultural intensity, the green areas low intensity. And you see that the Oder Basin is highly in intensively used uh, for agriculture. And this, as a consequence, on the right-hand side, means high emissions of nitrogen in the river basin. For phosphorus, other elements play a role. Population density and the amount of sewage water. And here you see as well that uh, the order is intensively populated. As a result, we have high phosphorus emissions in the river basin. And this is important for the entire Baltic Sea because the order is, after Neva and Vistula, the third largest uh, river basin. The problem we are facing in this river basin coastal zone system is that we have a river basin with 120,000 square kilometers. And all water, all nutrients, all pollutants from this river basins are discharged into a relatively small uh, coastal area, a lagoon of only about 700 square kilometers. On the first view, on the first look, the coastal area is scenic. It is attractive, large reed belts, and everything is more or less under nature protection, under EU Natura 2000 uh, protection. But if you have a more detailed look, there are a lot of uses. Tourism is one of them. It shall be further developed and increased, but this is hampered by eutrophication. So the high amounts of nutrients entering the system cause intensive algae bloom, blue algae blooms, and a low water transparency. We have temporary hypoxia, fish kills, and the kills of mussels who die even in the sediment when uh, the water above is oxygen-free over several days. And these high nutrient loads develop, uh, hamper the development of uh, the coastal zone. And there are large, large amounts. So there are 50,000 tons of nitrogen that are being transported into the coastal zone, into the Baltic Sea per year, and about 2,300 tons of phosphorus. And as we already said, the main reason for nitrogen is ag uh, agriculture. And for phosphorus, these are point sources, so cities, industries, and agriculture, mainly cattle breeding uh, in the area. And the development is more or less stable. This means over the last 20 years, we did not have a strong change with respect to the nitrogen loads. So this picture shows the annual um, loads and the green line indicates the trend. And there is no trend, so nothing towards the positive. With respect to phosphorus, this is different. 
During the last 20 years, a decline in the phosphorus loads, loads was visible because stepwise the sewage treatment technique was improved and caused a reduction of um, pollution by cities. So a positive trend. So a brief summary. What I did not show is that the nutrient loads increased very much until 1988. Showed afterwards a sharp decline because of relatively dry years, the first climate change uh, years. But during the last 20 years, no change with respect to nitrogen loads, but uh, a decline in phosphorus loads. However, the concentrations of nitrogen phosphorus in the river are still relatively high. They are above the threshold for a good ecological status in the river, and the resulting loads are above the requirements needed for transferring the Baltic Sea into a good status. So the first question is, can the nutrient loads in this river basin be reduced to an amount that it meets the requirements of the Water Framework Directive and the Baltic Sea Action Plan a protection scheme for the Baltic Sea? If we have a look at the targets in red, and we compare it to the situation 2010 to 2017, we see on the top that more phosphorus load reduction is needed to get a good status in the river. And the same is true for nitrogen. We need a further decrease from about 50,000 tons down to 36,000 tons. But this is potentially uh, possible. This reduction can be reached, but the more you reduce loads, the more extensive it becomes. So you need to invest a lot of money. And if you have a look at the present economic development in Poland, and the majority of the river basin belongs uh, to Poland, and the intensification of agriculture, it is not very likely that we will reach uh, this good status in the uh, future. The question is then, would a good status, a good water quality status in the river, ensure a good status in the Oder Lagoon? This is a complicated uh, picture. The area in gray is are the loads of phosphorus that can enter the system, the lagoon, so that it stays in a good situation, in an oligotrophic or mesotrophic state. But we are facing still the dots in the white area, in the eutrophic status. And you see that the dot of the loads between 2010 and 2017 are just above the loads of the target. And all these dots are in a eutrophic area. This means a good water quality in the river does not automatically cause a good quality in the lagoon. The Oder Lagoon is, because of the large river basin, a naturally eutrophied system. And this means that if you want to improve the status, you need to consider internal measures in the lagoon itself, so that you can expand the reed belts, the macrophyte areas, uh, to get a higher uh, water transparency. So, to conclude, what we learn from this example is that, in general, river basin management is coastal water management and Baltic Sea management. So all management has to start in the river basins, and they affect the coast and the sea.
And because of the interaction between coast and sea, the basins have to be taken into account in integrated coastal zone management approaches. They cannot be restricted to the coastal zone alone. Another aspect is that these approaches have to be future-oriented. Climate change, economic transitions, changes in agriculture have a strong effect on the basin and subsequently on the coast and on the sea. But the order is an example where with respect to water quality, river basin management alone is not sufficient for a good status in the coastal lagoon, in the coastal zone. This means, despite this logical link between river basin and sea, we have to take care what the special requirements of each of the systems are. And with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention.